Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. It's my great pleasure to welcome today's program, John Martin, who is Director of Business Development at Mercury Gate. And today we're going to talk about freight rate indices, understanding their role and value in transportation management. Now, there's uh, over the past few years, there's been a lot of um, you know new freight index indices that have been introduced in the market. You know, certainly when I talk to a lot of shippers, uh, some of them are using them, some of them have never heard of them. Uh, some of them are, uh, you know, apply them in some aspects of the transportation management. Others do not. Uh, some have it integrated with their TMS. Some do not. I mean, there's just a lot of disparity out there in terms of the under, you know, how how well shippers understand what these indices are and how they use them. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to, you know, talk to John today, who's, you know, uh, uh, up front uh, in the front lines, if you will, of of helping uh, shippers uh, work with freight indices and, and understanding how they can derive value from it. So, you know, certainly looking forward to get uh, his insights and in, um, understanding of how to, you know, share his advice with all of you in terms of how to leverage these more effectively. Um, just want to remind those of you that are joining us live today that if you do have a uh, question for John as we're having our conversation here, you can do so via the uh, submit a question button and uh, I'll take a look at that. And if it's a good and appropriate question and we have time, I'll certainly try to weave it into the conversation. Uh, so with that, John, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's great to be here, and I've I've been looking forward to our talk. So I'm I'm really excited, and and Adrian, thank you again. Great, great, John. Uh, you know, certainly happy to to have you on board. And um, you know, you're a first time guest here on Talking Logistics. And you know, whenever we have a a guest on for the first time, I, I always like to know a little bit about their career path and how and why they got involved in, in this industry to begin with. So why don't we just start there? Why don't you just briefly tell us a little bit about your career path, you know, how and why you got involved in supply chain logistics and what your current role and responsibilities are there at Mercury Gate. Sure. So um, obviously uh, I'm, I'm part of Mercury Gate and, uh, and I love logistics. I wound up here sort of uh, through lots of twists and turns. I started my career in, in commercial software development. I worked for JD Edwards and sign on and SSA. Uh, and then I went into IT management, and I did that with American Travelers and Conseco. And uh, and then along the way, I went to work for a friend of mine who owned a logistics concern in Pennsylvania. He had a 3PL, and uh, and I grew to to learn the learn the business and love it. And uh, and then uh, eventually wound up at, at Mercury Gate. I've been with Mercury Gate for about four and a half years now, and uh, and obviously I enjoy it very much here. Great, 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 great background. You know. Uh, Software, you know, 3PL, uh, you know, and obviously working on both sides, that's always uh, helpful to, to kind of get that perspective. Um, so so let, let's start, you know, again with, with a basic question, right? Because I think, you know, sometimes we, we assume that everybody knows what a freight index, uh, a freight rate index is, but they, they may not. So why don't we start there? What is a freight rate index? Sure. So um, it was a whole lot easier to come up with examples rather than a definition, but obviously, uh, I thought you might want a, a definition, so I came up with a working definition, and um, and what I came up with was a statistical measure of freight charge changes within a defined set of transportation movements, and I based that on some definitions of other in indexes, or similar indexes. So that's what I came up with for a working definition. I think that works in all cases, and then I think it's worthwhile to to call out some uh, examples and um, and as as I've explored the subject and, and do things with our customers and so on, uh, it, ne it had not really occurred to me until uh, we got into this more deeply that uh, there's a prominent freight rate index that, that shapes uh, decisions that governments make and policymakers and, and economics and that sort of thing. And of course, it's the Baltic Dry Index. So the Baltic Dry Index, it's a measurement of dry freight by sea. And it has its roots, it has its history going back to even the 18th century. A group of uh, merchants would get together at a coffee house called uh, the Virginia and Baltic uh, Coffee House. And that goes back to 1744. And 1823, they moved to uh, another place in London. They entered a uh, tavern and they formed a committee that set rules uh, for the, the conduct of, of transportation. In 1985, the, the, the group that the, the Baltic Exchange, the, the, the Baltic Committee, uh, they put out the first commercial rate, freight rate index, and it was called the Baltic, uh, the Baltic Index. It's now known as the Baltic Dry Index. And, and so 
that certainly uh, there's a lot of policy that's driven by that index is considered an unbiased leading economic indicator. But in the context of our conversation today, I thought we would probably be more interested in some of the indexes uh, centered around ground freight and that sort of thing. And, uh, and also some of the other commercial indexes uh, provide you better guidance in, in sourcing and setting uh, cost for, for broker loads. Many of the, the popular indexes, they tend to be truckload centric, but there's a, a wide variety uh, of freight rate indexes. Well, that's a great example. I had no idea that, uh, you know, with that example you gave that it, that it did it so, so far back. Um, and I like your working, you know, definition uh, of it. I think the, the word that kind of caught my attention was, you know, statistical, because I think that that's an important uh, element or, or component of it, because I think the way these, you know, indices work, um, you, you know, they're derived, uh, some of them are derived in very different ways. Um, and maybe that that's kind of leads me to that, my next question. I mean, with, with kind of the variety that's out there, I mean, what differentiates them? Is it how they're derived? Is it their focus, whether they're, you know, the type of mode that they're focused on? Can, can you kind of share a little bit about, you know, what differentiates some of these different indices out there? Sure. Kind of at a high level uh, in, in our research and our product positioning, uh, we see that there, there's two uh, major variations in the marketplace that are, are used for these purposes. And, and there's those that are uh, dynamic decision support for brokering. And so those sort of indexes, they give you insights into what the prevailing rates are in a lane. And that lane could be city to city or economic market to economic market, or as broad as a state to state. And in some cases, there's some country to country indexes, but they're not very useful for decision support, which leads us to the other more static, less dynamic uh, indexes. And those are often used for benchmarking and procurement. So if I want to go out and secure contractual rates, it's good for me to know what the prevailing rates have been historically within a lane so that it provides me guidance as I seek rates from brokers and providers, carriers, so that I have a sense of what a fair rate is within a lane and, and maybe when I should stop negotiating if if I've if I've achieved essentially an optimal rate in a lane. So it's those that are dynamic and best for decision support and those that are more static and better for longer term considerations. Right. No, that, I think that's a good, you know, high level, uh, you know, the distinction there. Um, now, and I guess this, this is kind of relates to my next question. Um, you know, going back to that point about being, you know, the, the statistics part of it, um, you know, how do you know that, you know, you're comparing apples to apples and, mm -hmm. you know, oranges to oranges, right? So how do you, you know, uh, you know, in some cases you can say, well, you know, you just take all the, all everybody's rates on this lane and, and you know, divided by the number of shippers and, and that's an average, right? So, but, but that doesn't necessarily give you a, um, a, a true indicator, I would say, because, all those 10 shippers might have very different types of freight, many, many different types of equipment requirements that might influence, you know, the rate that they pay. I mean, do you see that as kind of a, one of the factors that, that differentiates them is, you know, how it's actually calculated or what the, what, you know, is there a model behind these? Does it go beyond just taking averages? Yeah. So obviously, you know how the science works. You, you understand the implications of this. And, and so I jotted down an outline of some of the, important things, some of the important factors that underlie these various indexes, because there's quite a few indexes in the marketplace, but there's there's differentiators among each of them, and each of them has strengths and weaknesses. So one of those facets of, of what goes into an index is, is the matter of latency. So it's the matter of how frequently is that index updated. So if I'm going to use it for decision support and, and brokering and so on, I want something with a low latency. I want my data to be current. I want ideally daily updates at, at the most weekly updates. Now there are solutions that, uh, uh, that accept monthly updates. And so you don't get a great deal of volatility within the lanes and you don't get uh, often the ones that have monthly updates. They're, they don't have the granularity within the lane definitions that some of the, uh, the low latency solutions have. So, that's one of the factors is, is that how fresh and how current do I need this data to be? Again, if I'm brokering loads, I need to be pretty fresh and, and pretty current. I know what 
You need to know what the current market conditions are right now. There's also the modes of transportation. So if I'm looking for truckload drive freight, then uh, there's an enormous set of, of indexes that will provide truckload drive freight experience for me. Uh, if I want uh, other modes of equipment, if I want LTL, and, and of course there, there are solutions that include ocean, uh, air, rail, and intermodal. So ultimately I'm gonna want an index that, that captures modes of transportation that mirror the modes of transportation that I'm looking to model or evaluate. Above and beyond uh, modes, then there, there's certainly scope, and I've touched on this a little bit. So the, the, some of the indexes have a very high level of aggregation. So there's indexes out there where the only volatility that you're going to see on a monthly basis is sort of a national average, and they're not going to go uh, into one lane to another lane. So not to, not to keep harping on the brokerage uh, subject, but having a national average is, is, is not very practical or useful for me when I'm looking to secure a specific truck uh, between two points, if that's what I happen to be doing. Then also the, the depth. So there's, there's published indexes out there, but I'm concerned about how deep an experience those indexes are based on. So some of those indexes are based on a narrow experience, and, and when I have a a small depth or a small sample size, then I can get a representation of a rate in a lane that could be based on as little as a single load. And so that's not very informative uh, for me for what the true cost happens to be. That's the true cost for one party for one load in that lane. So I am concerned about how deep is the sample used for the, uh, the index. I also care about the, the rate determination method. So I can have indexes that are driven by uh, bidded rates. So often with the uh, with load boards and so on, I can. Uh, uh, you may have a situation where it's the bidded rate. It's not what freight actually moved at. It was a rate uh, bidded on that board. Uh, I silenced my phone. It just so happens that my watch is ringing. I'm going to click my phone. Uh, I apologize for that. No worries. Um, so the um and let me collect my thoughts again the uh so the the rate determination method i want to know whether or not these are settled rates or whether or not they're bidded rates i want to know if the freight actually moved at that then i would like to slice that a little bit further if i can distinguish between spot and contractual rates that's informative to me also and depending on what my purpose and the use of that rate happens to be and bonus if I can get a difference between buy and sell rates, that may be helpful for me if I'm a logistics professional, if I'm a broker, or if I'm a, a, a 3PL, I see the delta between what I can buy it at and what I can sell it for in both a, a spot and, and contractual basis. I have a, a handful of others, but I'll leave it up to a, your discretion there whether or not we want to, to keep going a little bit deeper. but. I would add batch analysis, the ability to evaluate lots of uh, shipments and loads at once. And then also um, I would add um, accuracy and adaptability. So I want to, to be able to have some type of configurable confidence level. Let's suppose that I have a limited experience between uh, exactly Lansing, Michigan and Towson, Maryland. Well, those are part of two greater economic markets, say Grand Rapids and Baltimore. So depending on the, if I have a great deal of experience in there, it's great to see what I'm doing there. If I don't have sufficient experience to give me a true representative sample, I want my index to radiate out to an economic market or if necessary, to a state to state pair to, to balance any outliers. So I know I gave you quite a bit, but, but all those things that came to mind and I wanted to make sure that I captured them. No, I, absolutely. I mean, I think what you just kind of uh, demonstrated there was the fact that there really is a lot of factors and things that shippers really need to think about when they're looking at these different freight rate indexes, um, because it's not, you know, as simple as just looking at a number, right? It's, it's, it's really understanding the context. It's understanding how it was derived, understanding how you want to apply it or what, what your application is. And, and making sure that you're using the right index for the right application. 
Um, so I think, you, you know, like you said, you could probably go on for, you know, 10, 15 minutes going into uh, all these other factors. But I think you, you communicated, you know, what I think is an important point is that, you know, you really have to give some some t thought to this, um, you, you know, in terms of evaluating the different uh, indices out there and how you want to use them, um, which then gives me, you know, brings me to my next question. I mean, can you give some, you know, use case examples or some case study examples of how, you know, some of your clients are, are using you know, freight rate indices and, and what value and benefits are, are they achieving? Sure. So the, um, uh, the feedback that, that we're getting, uh, there seems to be especially positive around, around two areas of focus. So the first one is, is for those concerns that are, are brokering, um, that's, uh, with our rate friend solution, it's incorporated into our workflow. And, and for those who utilize the rate friend solution, we pro provide an instant index value uh, where we break out the line haul and the fuel. So in their process, it's a natural entry point when they're sourcing for a load uh, for them to see what their target uh, should should be. So the assumption is, is that if you need to broker a load, you need to know what a fair rate is. And so before you bid it out or before you um, put it on a, a reverse auction or you go to a load board or something like that, have that information right there in your workflow and invisible to you. So we're getting a lot of positive feedback about how we've done that for the sourcing exercise. The other piece is, is that, and it was probably a little surprising to me how much this this has come up. So I thought it was really neat that we incorporated the uh, the batch provisions in the uh, solution, but I don't think I was necessarily expecting. Uh, how much interest there there was for people to use this in their procurement exercises. So it's it's it has become almost universal that uh, that when I'm having a conversation about the rate indexes and our rate index in protect, particular, how much use people are getting out of the batch uh, exercise because capacity is tight. There's only you know I'm only going to get uh, a, cer a certain range of rates within a lane. So. This provides me some intelligence guidance about what is probably fair and acceptable before I go out to the marketplace and, and take the shotgun approach. I'm going to have, I'm gonna, I can give the carriers guidance about uh, what I'm looking for, and I know that I'm asking for something that is fair and reasonable. That's consistently nearly every conversation that I have with people with rate indexes, whether they're using it presently or they're exploring it. Those are the kind of probably the two facets that resonate with people the most. Now, and you already, you know, touched upon this, you know, I mean, are these, um, you know, freight rate indices, I mean, are they, you know, integrated as part of the TMS, as part of the workflow? Uh, I mean, you mentioned rate friend. I mean, is that, um, you know, is that your own Mercury Gates um, uh, computed? You, you know, index that you provide to your customers? You provide other third-party indices that can integrate to this? I'm just going to get a sense of, you know, if you're using a, a TMS, you know, how does this get integrated into the uh, into the solution and into the, the workflow processes? Sure. So within the TMS, obviously, we're, uh, we're, we're especially proud of our solution, and I think it's a good solution. We do integrate with some of the other commercial uh, indexes directly in the workflow uh, uh, with, the, with the TMS. Um, we think obviously there's a compelling argument for ours, and we also recognize that that people use other indexes, and they um, uh, and for the purpose they're using it for, uh, they have confidence in it. So there are a handful of other indexes that uh, that we integrate directly into ours, and you get that instant uh, perspective of what the rate happens to be. Um, and then of course we have ours, and then there are indexes out there in the marketplace where they simply don't lend themselves to integration. And one of the reasons why they don't really lend themselves to integration is is that they're not intended for dynamic decision support. And even some of the batch solutions, there's a, a mapping and an upload process that you go through in order to to get your outcome. So um, that's the some of the the, the the variations that we have. Naturally, some of the solutions out there in the marketplace, you can connect to them via hyperlinks and that sort of thing. But for us, it was important to, uh, often our brokers, they tell us that, um, you know, the concept of time is money, speed is very important. So we've, um, we've worked very hard to make sure that it's part of the natural progression of, of sourcing their, their transportation. You know, for me, I, I think I've, I've been a, a big proponent for a long time of, of software as a service, you know, for, for TMS. And I think one of the, 
uh, inherent benefits of this network model, if you will, is it allows you to aggregate this data, if you will, mm -hmm. from many different, you know, from everybody that's on that single platform, right? All the shippers that you work with, all the 3PLs that you work with, you know, carriers, so on and so forth. So all going through that centralized system gives you as the you know solution provider the opportunity, you know, to really aggregate that data, you know, and, and apply those statistical methods, if you will, to create that, you know, in your case, you call it, uh, you know, rate friend, create that index that then obviously is, is tightly embedded within your, your your application. So so I think, you know, that's one of the things and when a lot of people talk about software as a service, they, they tend to think of, rightly so, you know, faster deployment time and implementation time and, and you know, uh, lower upfront costs, so on and so forth. But these are one of those, what I call, you know, hidden benefits or value added propositions of software as a service. In this case, what we're talking about here is the ability to do benchmarking and to really gr uh, leverage that common data that's flowing through the uh, through the network, right? Really well put, and 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 you've you've hit the nail on the head. Very true. So, um, so let, let's talk about perhaps some of the pitfalls or, or mistakes that companies make in in selecting or using you know a freight rate index. I mean, what are some of the ones that companies ought to look out for? So I think that um, if I had a top three priority list, if I were seeking an index, um, I would personally, I would seek to make sure that it has the, the mode uh, of service that I'm looking for, that it aligns with what I'm looking to do. I would make sure that uh, the, the latency requirements meet my requirements. If I need, if I need real-time decisions to support information, I'm going to make sure that I uh, select a solution that's updated frequently. And then also it's related, but uh, that also goes to the volatility of the data. You know, is the, uh, is the, again, is my information being updated uh, frequently and can I make a reliable decision when I'm seeking uh, rates from carriers in a lane? All those, all the other factors I think are important also. It, it speaks to the credibility of a given index, but my first three eliminators would be the, the, the mode, the latency and the volatility. Yeah, great, great, uh, uh, you know, short list. Uh, you know, John, I'm looking at the time here. We're kind of running, you know, short on time. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, go to my last question here. I mean, if I'm a, if I'm a shipper that, that currently isn't using any kind of, uh, you know, freight rate index, um, you know, now is interested based on our conversation here. I mean, how, how should they get started? I mean, what, what are the first steps that they should take? I think I would set, uh, an objective set of criteria for what my index is going to include. And, uh, and I jotted down a, a list for myself of uh, objective measurements that I would seek and, and what my standard might be. So around the subjects of uh, do I need this for brokering, benchmarking, procurement, uh, mode and rate determination, uh, the latency, the depth of the sample, uh, how the lanes are defined, uh, ease of use and access. If you can have the greatest tool in the world, but if it's not accessible or, or easy to use, then no one's going to use it. Uh, I prefer the ease of TMS integration, and uh, those. If I gave myself an objective scorecard and I put those subjects on that scorecard, and then as I evaluate the different solutions, uh, and of course I can score them any way I, I see fit. If brokering is not important to me, of course, then I'm not going to care about that score. But I think that's a range of, of factors that I would use to make an objective assessment. Great. That's a great uh, uh, recommendation there and uh, kind of using the scorecard method to, uh, you know, help uh, the decision making process. Well, John, like I always say at the end of all our episodes, you know, we always just manage to scratch the surface on, on these topics. But but I think, uh, you know, we, we managed to get a good conversation started here. Hopefully, you know, folks that are, you know, listening today or watching this on demand, uh, you know, the wheels are turning and, and um, uh, you know, we can... Uh, uh, see m more shippers, you know, take advantage uh, mm -hmm. of these freight rate indexes that are out there and, and leverage them, you know, more effectively. So, um, again, John, thank you very much for making the, the time to be with us today. I really enjoyed my time. Adrian, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Great. I, I want to thank uh, those of you that joined us today. Uh, we didn't get any questions live, but if you, uh, if you are watching this on demand and you do have a question uh, or comment for John, you can uh, find this episode on TalkingLogistics.com. And you can post a question or a comment there, and I'm sure John will be more than happy to uh, respond via that medium. So, again, thank you all for joining us today and look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Talking Logistics. Have a great day. Bye-bye.